Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. How are we all? I hope you've had a nice week so far. Today we're back in the garage again. Uh, we're gonna do something, revisit one of the issues I've been having in the car where it just won't get up the temperature. So uh, yeah, we'll go today I'm gonna strip down the, uh, take out the, the inner cooler, take off the inlet manifold, and uh, you know, we'll identify them leaks and sort them leaks you've seen in the other video. And uh, we'll get a look at the cooling system. I use a swivel neck type K20 eBay job, you've probably seen them before, probably be on one of the older videos. Um, but yeah, it's, it's running like 67 degrees, maybe 68 degrees. And um, in turn what that does is it keeps my oil too cool as well. And you know, you do want a bit of heat, you don't want to have them too cool. Um, not only that, it plays with my corrections also. So yeah, this here, I bought this, it's from a CRV, Honda CRV. Um, they're all pretty much the same stats and the housings between the K20Cs. Um, and yeah, this is the standard type um, thermostat. And as you can see there, it just basically fits inside here and the heat fluctuates whether this opens or closes. And uh, these are ones I've bought off eBay, two different types. I think this one's off Vauxhall. Corsa, which run at like 92 degrees, like that's that's a bit maybe a bit too hot. Um, this one here says 82 degrees, so I'll probably end up using this one. Um, but what we'll do is uh, take the one out of the car um, just now, and um, we'll stick these in a pot with some boiling water, and we'll see which one opens. So yeah, first things first, um, I'll take off the intercoolers, just a couple of clips. Uh, fire out these bolts here, uh, in fact I could probably just leave them in. Uh, I'll take the fuel lines off, take the injectors off, lift that loom out of the way, and uh, I've just got some uh, bolts holding this inlet manifold on. We'll um, take them off and that'll take, uh, give me plenty of room to work down there. You can kind of see a little bit of the thermostat housing, so let's get to it. Yeah, so all I need to do is take off this. Um, this is the one that goes to my brake servo. Um, this one's your map sensor, and this one's here for fuel uh, pressure reference. Uh, and this one here is just the air temp. Um, don't know if you remember back in the video, I just um, threaded the sensor itself, and uh, you know, um, tapped this piece here to MPT, one eighth MPT, and then screwed the actual sensor into the body. And it doesn't look like it's been leaking so far. So. Um, that's good. Yeah, I'll let you bear that noise a wee second. It's just draining on my cooler and onto my floor. <laughs> I forgot to put a pan down, but it's fine. Anyway, so this is the setup I've got just now. It's just the, the standard sort of style, um, obviously with the swivel neck to try and help me get the coolant to the front of the car. And what I'm gonna do now is I'll take off that Jubilee clip down there, and I might actually pull this full system off. Um, I'm going to simplify, you know, all these pipes coming off the top here, uh, one's the heater matrix, one's to the top piece around the corner there. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna simplify that a bit. I don't like how a lot of them are push-on connections. Um, like, for instance, this piece here. Um, you know, that, that did make a bracket, but obviously the vibration snapped that. If that pops out, I'll lose all my coolant. You dropped your juice. <laughs> He's like, oh god, dad's got the camera out. <laughs> Wee monkey. Uh, yeah, so as you can see down here, this pipe here in particular, it's, uh, I did have a bracket at the back there, it was welded on and it snapped off. And if you see what can happen if the pressurizes, that's just an o-ring. So uh, yeah, all the water will push out. Ham sandwich. Oh, she's a good cook. <laughs> Better than me, like. Mmm, just. Whew. 
I tell you what, that got messy fast. Um, I ended up having to snap off the bracket itself just because these pieces here have actually seized themselves inside the plastic so uh, yeah the, the bolt started stripping and stuff so I end up just taking the hammer to it snapping it off I've got another one over there if, if worst case comes to it but this type of uh, thermostat you can bolt straight onto the, the cover so right I've snuck in the house hopefully the missus doesn't see me do this she'll go mental if uh, if she sees me test my car parts in the kitchen but basically we're going to be sticking these in to see when they open up this one has 82 degrees in it so even though it was like maintaining a temperature of 68 degrees in my car it says 82 on it and I would be happier if it was 82 but I do have another stat which is 82 so we'll stick that in and we'll see if you know this one maybe isn't 82 degrees one way, I believe, is to cook your thermostats to 120 degrees for 45 minutes and then let them in the steamer for a little while after that. Makes them nice and crunchy. Mmm, thermostats for tea. So I've got the baby uh, bath temperature gauge in there. <laughs> She's gonna kick my head in. Uh, we're at 67 degrees, so um, this is about when I'm thinking the stats opening. 70 degrees. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but let's try to zoom in. You can see that's starting to crack now around the edges. So that's cracking too early. Yep. She's opened up. Right, so now we're coming up about 80 degrees, and this one's started cracking now. So let's see if we can get this out, and you guys can see what I'm on about. See the air passing there off that rubber seal? Yeah, that, that's uh, that's cracked now. So that's around about 80. We'll keep going. This one's 91 or 92. We won't be putting that one in. And as you can see, obviously, that's just fully open. There you go. There we have it. I've stuck a couple of new fittings in there uh, because I'm going to use this one uh, to feed up to the top side and then I'm just going to stick this uh, thermostat inside here hopefully it'll fit and then offer it up to the block and uh, yeah that's all that's all there is to my little darling she's sleepy sleepy darling <laughs> so yeah what I've uh, done now is put the thermostat housing back on and um, tightened everything up so it's there, it's a simplified version. Right guys, so uh, where we're at now is this sort of auxiliary one comes up from the top port down here and I've stuck a T in here which then comes and goes into the heater matrix um, and same from this one here. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. So that bottom pipe is now on, you've seen I welded it there, so I just need to put more of a bend on it and it goes down to the radiator. Uh, I've got all my other hoses in there. Everything fits nicely. Now we're gonna get a jug of water and fill it up. Ooh, look at that. Nice and shiny. And this side as well. All clean up nice. Now what I'm gonna do, is throw the standard Honda gasket away and just use some silicon. Yep, a lot of folk are going to cringe with that. But I have a point because this is the standard gasket here. And yeah, it may work in factory form, 
and if it was actually in alright condition. Um, however, when I'd done the pressure test, it was leaking. So um, at least because it's two machine surfaces, I've cleaned it all down, everything's nice and flat. If I put some Honda Bond on, um, well, if it can seal sumps and stop oil, we put it as sumps in the engine case itself. I'm sure it's going to stop a little bit of air escaping from the inlet manifold. Um, and I know it's, you know, it's not as simple as that, but if it works, it works, and that's all I'm after. Right, guys, and there we have it. And the manifold's back on again. I'm going to let it dry overnight, so uh, when I pressure test it tomorrow, I'll be able to see if that leaks have disappeared from the inlet manifold. So, um, yeah. That'll do it for me tonight. Um, I'm happy I've managed to sort out all the coolant system. It's not been draining any water, so I've not got any big leaks, which is always nice to see. Uh, and uh, yeah, so next video we'll get on to installing the eBay um, tile style fucking uh, blow off valve and fix that big hole in my intercooler. <laughs> and uh, we'll get another pressure test and we'll see if then things have gotten any better. Anyway, guys, appreciate it for watching and uh, we'll catch you next vid. Cheerio.